So what you don't want to do is, good job Colton, you're doing really good. Your fur looks good today. It's nice outside. Later we can do this. Later we can do that. The dog next door doesn't like you. The other dog does. What do you think about this? I mean, like, hey, I'm talking to you. Do you understand me? Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canon Educator. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you guys don't know, we have people from all over the country every single week coming in to work with me and I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful for you guys at home watching. If you guys haven't yet, do not forget to like this video, smash that subscribe button. And today I have a wonderful video and we're gonna be talking about something I haven't really talked about before on this channel. We're gonna be talking about pressure guys, how important pressure is in building uh, an obedient dog, a well-behaved dog, a dog that you can understand, uh, building a good communication, building a better relationship with your dog, voice pressure, physical pressure, body pressure, spatial pressure, and all of the above, and how important and how much of an impact you probably don't even realize that you're doing with your dog. We're gonna get in all of that stuff in this video, and I hope you guys like it. If you haven't yet, do not forget to cop yourself some No Bad Dog merch, as well as like this video, smash that subscribe button, and let's just get right into it, guys. Here we go, break. So what I wanna do is just switch to the training leash, which is gonna be four foot, mm -hmm. um, and then this is a slip collar. So the way that this works is, is when he pulls on this, yep. obviously there's no consequence for that. Yep. He's like, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is whatever. So um, the slip collar is just something that we have pre-made here. And then um, I'll kind of make it customized for him for now. You don't have, you can take this. You don't have any like engagement with him at all. So he's just doing whatever he wants to do. And so there's two things that come with that. There's obviously like, a lot of obedience problems and then there's a lot of behavioral problems you'll get from that as well because he's just he, like you like you said he's beating his own drum like he's doing his own thing and that's a problem especially with um, any dog it doesn't matter what their age is so I'm gonna tune him up on the slip collar something if you guys watch my videos you'll know that I do almost every dog um, so what that does is it creates engagement so I'll say hey like hey pay attention to me and hopefully we don't know for sure Hopefully my goal is just for him to start looking at me. So when he's on the leash with you guys, it's just like this. And so we need to create that like, pay attention to me type of thing. Heel. Good job. So I'm starting to get his attention here. Heel. Yes, good heel. Good job, buddy. There's like a, there's like a micro macro to this. The micro is on the smaller level is he's being more obedient on the leash, which is good. But the bigger picture is his mental state of mind is gonna get better and better over time. So he's gonna be less like all over the place mentally as well. I'm not, I don't want him to not be a dog. So I want him to look around. I want him to be suspicious of other things and mentally invest into other things to say, hey, what's this? I'm in a new place, whatever. Um, but I don't want him pulling. I don't want him non-responsive to me. So when I turn and I say heel, I want him to do it. If he doesn't, I give him that quick pop. It'll change his life forever. Uh, and it'll change your life if you are consistent with it. I'm gonna walk you through this process really quick that if you have it, if you have it, it doesn't just him, it's like, it's applicable to any dog. And anybody that comes in here and trains with me, I want you guys to have enough information, skills, knowledge, practice to, to go and train other dogs. It's not just for him. I want you guys to know how to do all of this, which is why I talk so much, is because for me and him, the session would have been over by now. He would have been back into his crate and I would have grabbed another dog. But you guys have to go home and make sure that you can do this. And that's where the work comes in. And that's why I'm so hands-on sometimes, but I'm also super hands-off sometimes, because you guys got to learn how to do this. So, um, um, Watch my, my leash pressure is very big. So um, anytime you, so here, like I apply pressure, right, like that to correct him. Anytime that your elbow comes up, you're punishing him somehow. So your, your, um, hmm, your pressure on the leash is, is very crucial for the dog. So you gotta make sure that when you're handling and he's doing everything right, you're nice and relaxed. So it's, it's really good like pressure release system, you gotta be conscious of that. 
So don't walk around like this, because you're already correcting him 75% of the time. So when you actually need to punish him, you have very small leverage. So when you're here, heel. Good. You're nice and, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Good. The other thing that everyone does that you shouldn't do is looking and talking to the dog. So what you don't wanna do is this and then a bunch of white noise. Good job, Colton. You're doing really good. Your fur looks good today. It's nice outside. Later we can do this. Later we can do that. The dog next door doesn't like you. The other dog does. What do you think about this? I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. And people don't realize that they do that, but you have to realize that it's very detrimental to your relationship because you're trying to teach a dog very singular words of the English language. And it doesn't matter what you use. You can say popsicle, spaghetti, and meatball, and they can all mean sit down, stay. It doesn't matter. So you just have to make sure that when you're working with him, that you're, you're not giving him, info. anytime you give the dog information that he doesn't understand, and the more you do this, right, then when you actually need to say something and communicate to the dog, they're like, why not? What else has changed? And you're like, well, before I was just monologuing and you know, whatever. And he doesn't, they don't understand that. So um, when you're walking with him, you're just Colton heel and that's it. So don't give him any white noise because we stop Colton sit. A little pressure up. Good. He's looking for food. That's why he did that. So I asked him to sit. He looked at my hand. He's like, what are you going to give me? I'm like, nothing. He's like, well, this sucks. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> so we went through that whole process really quickly. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So when you're working with him, yeah, good question. Yes, it does. Yeah. So when I'm handling him, uh, typically what I'll do is I'll ask him to do it first because it looks like he's kind of got that pre-existing sit. He kind of knows that. So I asked him to sit and if he doesn't, I'll go pressure up. Now, the first time I corrected him, I did pressure. And then pretty much every other time I've asked him to sit after that, he's been okay with it. So it would be pressure up if you're asking him to sit and he doesn't. When you're healing with him and he moves forward, heal. <laughs> when you're healing with him and he moves forward, like what you wanna do is you create an invisible line right here. And so I use like a lot of verbal checks too. So I go, ah, ah, just to like remind him. So if he heals past, I'll pop backwards. Okay. So if he goes forward, I'll pop backwards like this. But the most important thing is, is I'm not pulling him because that doesn't do anything because you have to get his attention. And so that's what a correction is, is I'm correcting him because he's doing something he shouldn't be doing. And if you just kind of pull him back, you're going to be gassing him up a little bit, especially with a dog that's nose down, stimulated, going after whatever they want to go after. Uh, if I just pull, he's going to have a, a match with me. So you have to have that leverage to make sure you can come out and then pop. Um, so now the break, super big. So again, I'm never going to tell a dog to, hey, this is all the stuff you have to do without also telling him, okay, now you don't have to do it anymore. Um, it's just like with kids, it's just like with people. It's like you show up to work, hey, I want you here at eight. And you're like, okay, when do I leave? I don't know. You're like, okay, so is it like in an hour? Or is it, the, who knows? So it becomes very, so when I do break, it's break. It's like very, and I have like a girly voice anyway, so it's easy for me to go really high, really quick. Um, and then uh, I also like relieve myself from him. So I'm not next to him anymore, I go break. So I'm getting away from him as much as possible and letting him do what he wants. So when he's in his break, as you guys noticed, he pulled me over this way. I don't care because I told him he can break. And that's the beauty of making sure we teach a dog how to heal and break and all that stuff. So right now he's on his break. So I don't care if he's sniffing the cot and doing whatever he wants to do. But when I'm, when I'm ready to, to ask him to do something again, I'll say his name to register like, hey, I'm about to ask you to do something. And then I'll tell him what to do. And then release your pressure just a little bit, nice and relaxed. Your, feel your, so feel your uh, right arm is like nice and relaxed. Yep, there you go. So I'm gonna uh, keep coming towards me and just slow down a little bit. But, so stop for a second. So, 
Do you, do you notice anything? He's pushing her? No. no. So, so walk towards me again. Heel. heel. Tell him to heel. Good. So stop. Good. So like, see how see how much pressure you're putting on that arm. So here, let me see him. So you're you're doing you're doing this. So this arm's good, yep. but this arm you're still up here a bit. Okay. You don't realize it, and that's why I've seen if you realized it. So you're so like I said, you're putting 50% of the pressure on all the time. So when you need it, he's like, eh. you know. So you want to go zero to 100 really quick. But if you're 50 to 100, it's not as efficient or effective. So just remember, heel. Because you're, you're in fix it mode. That's why you're doing it. Because you're, you're, so even if you're like this, but not like this, it's still so much pressure. So just make sure, that's why I was trying to tell you like, match your left arm with your right arm. Because that arm was good. This arm, you were still tight. And he'll pick up on that, like big time. So if you're walking heel, you just want to be like this. So see how nice and relaxed that is? There you now, go. And I'll just keep walking. Nice and relaxed. Good. Much better. Much better. Do you guys want to switch? You still have tension in the <laughs> It's tough. You're, you're, you're all good. Just keep practicing. So. Good. Good. Now turn the other way. Nice. Here, we're gonna switch for a second and I wanna try something with you. I want you to hold this yeah. and I want you to do it without a dog. Without a dog? Yep, so just do this. Okay. Yes, okay, good. Now just walk and just pretend that there's a dog there. So see how much pressure you're putting on the dog? That, so put it down, <laughs> good. Now walk, there's just, not even a dog. see? Now still pressure though, so nice and relaxed. And then out a little bit. So you're right, so feel your right arm. Yep. That's how you want that arm to be. So go ahead and heal again. Still like I'm still is yeah. It? Just just no. You're you're good. Just relax your arm. Good. Now heal again. There's still pressure. Forget that you're even holding the leash. Yeah. Too long. Just put your arm down. There you go. There you go. That's it. That's that's it. Just nice and relaxed. Like pretend that doesn't exist. And then just stop. Good. Now put this on the floor so you can feel that drag. And now do it again. It's better. Good. It's a lot better. Good. And then just stop. Good. And then, so like see, I said, I want you guys to basically yeah. become dog trainers. So those little subtleties of handling are so huge. Everything that we do with our dogs is a conversation piece, like everything. It doesn't matter if they're on the leash or they're off the leash. So if he's on the leash or if I'm using my body or whatever, it's always communication. There's always a line of communication going on. So you just have to remember that, that the more your communication is diluted and whatever, um, that's where your relationship goes. You're like, hey, I'm talking to you. Do you understand me? Not really. I'm just gonna keep talking anyway, you know? So you just have to realize that on the leash, your body, your voice, everything about you is a conversation. And if you're not like precise, and if you're not like clear about what you're trying to communicate, your relationship goes to, I like you, you like me, we're roommates, this is great, we hang, we hang out, but the communication is not there. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Lakota and I are gonna go play some fetch. I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't yet, do not forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and of course, copy yourself some No Bad Dog merch. If you haven't already, link in the description below. I will talk to you guys next time. I appreciate you so much, and so does Lakota. Peace! No, I'm sturdy like a milli rocket. Skin clear, still look y'all. Andy Miller knock his money in my pocket. Don't call me a money pocket. Engine get your rocket. It sound like a thunder rocket. Yeah, I still love my baby even when it's toxic. Crazy like she Britney, but no, she don't shade the knock. No, Russell what's the way I get low and stay in the pocket. I get paid and do my dance like a touchdown. Yeah, I can't do no trying to lead that gun around.